every advertising platform has some sort of tracking script we can put on our website for a couple different reasons. First, we want to be able to track conversions, any sort of performance that people are taking on the site. Second, we can use those to create audiences and then retarget people within our ads platforms. Facebook is no different. One of the things that I really like about the Facebook Pixel is it's actually highly customizable and we can utilize some standard and or custom events to fire different scripts back into the Facebook ads platform based on the actions people are taking on your site. A lot of the conversions or audiences you can create are based on URL rules, but there are some instances where those just don't make sense. So we can use these custom events or standard event triggers instead to have those actions put into the Facebook ads platform. Now, all of these are completely useless if you don't have the Facebook ads base pixel already installed on your site. So good news, we've already launched a video about that. So check that out in the show notes if you haven't done it already. Once you've installed the base pixel, then come back here and we'll start talking about setting up custom events in Facebook. Are we all good? You got the base pixel in place? Awesome. Let's hop in. Now that we've got that out of the way, we need to go into the Facebook ads platform and start to customize our pixel. So when you start off in the ads manager, you need to head into the events manager. In the new interface, it will just say events manager. This is still the old interface, so we can click immediately into pixels. You'll then see the pixel that is assigned to this account. If you have multiple pixels, those will also be listed here. So we're just going to click on the pixel for this account. And then in the upper right, to start setting up these events, we need to click on Setup and Set Up New Events. Facebook then pops up a list of these standard events, these event codes that it already has in place. The first piece that we have here, you'll see e-commerce and retail. That's where it always defaults. If you click on this drop down, it will open up a list of industries. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to feed you the events that it thinks are most common in those industries. So for e-commerce and retail, it's saying that view content, search, add to wish list, add to cart, initiate checkout. All of these are pretty standard events that you would imagine you would want to use in an e-commerce and retail space. If you are in the real estate space instead, you'll notice that a lot of the events change. They change the name of what they are to be more tailored toward the industry that you might be in. These are, these are just suggestions, kind of guidelines that you have here. If you actually click on this drop down, you'll see travel down at the bottom. If you scroll just a little bit, the last listing here is other business category. And if you click on that, it actually opens up all of the options you have available. It gives you all of the different ones that are in there. So if you can't find anything that makes sense, try other business category, and then you'll probably find something that makes sense. What I want to do today is just set up an add to cart event that we have in here. So you click the drop down here and it'll open up this section that'll let you start to customize how your event is passing information back into Facebook. If you have a specific value that comes through with this event, you can add it here. Say if you assume that every time somebody adds to cart, it's $10, or if it's an actual purchase, there's revenue associated with it that you can pull from the data layer. You can also add other parameters if you want to based on content, content ID, content type, these sorts of things. That's a more advanced video than what we're trying to do right now. So for right now, let's assume that we don't really want to customize it too much. Um, and we want to just add this event to our website. There are two basic types of conversion action here. You can do track event on page load or track event on inline action, like a button click or somebody taking an action on a site that doesn't then load an additional page afterward. Depending on what type of event you're trying to track, use the code accordingly that Facebook has set out. They have done these two different types of codes for a reason. So on a page load piece for add to cart, the script is going to look like this. It's relatively short, um, just says script, FBQ, track, add to cart, close script. If the event you actually want to track is something more like a button click or a specific action on your site that doesn't lead to a new page, choose inline action. Effectively, what changed is just the placement of where they tell you to actually add the code because it's going to fire differently. It's going to operate differently. And Facebook has created these two different conversion actions for a reason. But for this example, I'm just going to do a page load, very basic conversion action that we have here. So what I need to do is I need to copy this script. When you hover over this field, it'll overlay with blue and say copy to clipboard. All you have to do is click anywhere in this field and now it's been copied to your clipboard. 
Now to place this pixel on this website, I'm going to use Google Tag Manager because that's what we use on almost all of the websites that we work with. It's extremely easy and it's also a great way to make sure that you have all of your scripts and events firing all in the same area for all of the different account types that you're using. So let's hop into Google Tag Manager. And in this account, I need to create a new tag. So I'm already in the tags field. I'm just gonna click new. We'll give it a name of Facebook Add to Cart. And then I click on tag configuration. And there's not a featured or direct integration with Facebook custom events. So what I need to do is click on custom HTML, come in the HTML field and click paste. Now my add to cart script is in place. What I then need to do is tell Google Tag Manager what action, what page do I want this to trigger on on our website. So I click on trigger. And for this example, I'm gonna use the buy page visit. That trigger's already been set up, so it was able to be chosen. Now I just have to hit click save. Now you'll see over here in the tags field that there's Facebook add to cart custom HTML. You can see our Facebook pixel here, also custom HTML is on all pages, so it's already in place. And now all we have to do is submit and publish these changes. Now that we've published the changes, we wanna make sure that everything is firing properly. So let's head back into the Facebook ads platform. And since I left off on this page, I wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to test events. This brings up a piece within the Facebook events manager where you can test the events on your site. We're gonna blur this out. You're not gonna be able to see it, but basically I'm going to enter the website that I just made the changes for. And what's gonna happen is that it's going to then open the website in a new window. So let me show you kind of what that looks like. Specifically, I'm typing in the URL of a page that I know will fire the event that I just set up. So in here, you can see that I typed in the URL, which again, I'm sorry, it's blurred out, but the rule that we set up was based to trigger on when the page contained slash buy. So now I'm gonna click the open website button and it's going to open the page that I just typed in to this field in a new tab. And then I'm not gonna let you see it. <laughs> Once I clicked the open website button, a new tab opened up and the page loaded on the page that I expected the event to trigger on. In Facebook, it reverted me back to this test your events in real time page. And now we can see that the add to cart trigger has been fired recently at 7.52 PM, which is literally right now. So it's basically telling me in real time, did this action fire or not? Now we know that it's successfully set up and everything is squared away and ready to go. Now that we've set up this custom event, we're able to pass that information back into Facebook when somebody triggers that add to cart event through Tag Manager. The benefit, and for a later video, is that we can now use that not only to see how many times that happens within Facebook, we can see that in the events page, but we can also start to use that to build audiences off of, to build conversion actions. We can then customize it based on the frequency of those conversion actions, or if we were to have uh, customized the values that were being passed back in. Like I said, you could do it for like the revenue coming in from an e-commerce purchase, dynamically pulling in from the data layer. You could start to create conversion actions saying that somebody spent over $500 on a purchase. So it not only was a page that somebody viewed with the Facebook base pixel, they triggered that custom event and the value of that custom event was over $500. There's a lot of customization that can be done with the Facebook pixel, as long as you're willing to take the time, make the effort to start to customize these events and pass as much data back into the platform as you can. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos.